Hey everyone, welcome back to the series of videos on building a portable development environment. This is video three. In the previous video, we discussed setting up ZSH as our default shell. And in the video before that, we were walking through the Nix package manager for cross-platform package management. Uh, so far, we have a pretty good setup going. We have been uh, setting up a Linux environment on Windows subsystem for Linux. But in tandem, we're also writing this install script that theoretically can be used on any, uh, you know, Nix based Unix or Linux based machine. Uh, so you can see at the top of this file, we are installing the Nix package manager, sourcing it, installing a bunch of packages, including ZSH and NeoVim, which this video is going to be about. And then we're using ZSH as our default shell. We're bundling some ZSH plugins. Uh, this install script is something that we will use in the future. We'll commit it to source with our dot files. And anytime you set up a new machine, you just clone the dot files directory or repository from GitHub and run this install script once and everything will be set up. So that is the plan of this series. If you haven't seen the first two videos, I highly recommend going back and watching them. I will link them in the description. This video specifically is on setting up NeoVim and it's what I've been using for the last month or two to write code most every day, switching from VS Code. Still have a lot of things to work out, but in this video, I'm gonna walk through setting up NeoVims from scratch, uh, you know, and show you guys how I use it. If you're curious about NeoVim, you can go to the URL neovim.io and read a little bit more or you can check out this Notion document, which will also be linked in the description. We did install NeoVim in a past video, uh, in the first video. We installed a bunch of packages with Nix, including NeoVim, uh, but up until this point, we've really only been using Vim to interact with files. You can see here that I'm using the Vim command. If I just run Vim with no file, you'll see that we are inside of Vim. If I wanna use NeoVim, I can type nvim, and now I'm inside of NeoVim. NeoVim uh, currently, as time of recording, is on version 0.5.1. That is the stable version. You can also get on the nightly versions as well. Uh, but we have no configuration set up at all. NeoVim, works a little bit differently from regular Vim. And, uh, Vim uses a VimRC file at your home directory. So your home directory, for, for this computer, mine is home Jake, which is the one we are currently in. Uh, and if I wanted to configure Vim, I can write this VimRC file. NeoVim is a little bit different. It does not use a VimRC file. It actually uses a init.vim file, which is located at the following file path. So right here, this command is making a directory uh, called .config slash nvim. And now you can see right here, I do have a .config directory. I can cd into that. You can see inside of the .config, I have an nvim directory. So I will cd into that and I have nothing in here, right? So I'm gonna vim init.vim. Actually, let's use nvim, init.vim. And now I'm currently in an empty file called init.vim, which is located at the path .config slash nvim slash init.vim. Now, I have a bunch of settings that I'm gonna kind of dump in here. Uh, you know, these are settings that I use for my configuration and you can find them in my uh, GitHub repository for dot files, which I'll link in the description as well. But let's just do, uh, you know, the most basic settings first. So I have some general settings here that, uh, you know, these are sort of things that I've adopted from other configurations from other people, uh, or just kind of doing research on my own. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And I'm also gonna source it. Now on the bottom left here, you can see that I'm writing the command SO with a percent sign. It's essentially shorthand for doing source and then writing the file path, uh, which is, you know, init.vim. But instead of writing this entire file path, 
you can simply just use a percent sign and you don't have to write the full source either you can just write so so i'll do that and boom all of a sudden we have some slight modifications to our file we now have uh line numbers which is uh essentially given to us by this setting right here we give some uh, width to the line numbers we're also using this relative number setting which is essentially labeling the num the line that you're on as its line number so we're on line 12 here we're on line 11 we're on line 12 we're on line 11 we're on line 12 but the lines above and below are numbered relative to the one that you're on so you can see line one is uh we're moving around but line one is above line 10 and below line 10 and the numbers will grow relative to the line that you're on which is kind of cool there's a lot of other settings going on here i did write an article about most of these so if you go to this notion document and inside related articles i have this article called getting started with vim and in the general settings section i have some explanation on some of these settings now that we're starting to use NeoVim a little bit, we can take another step to sort of condition ourselves to ad adopt NeoVim all the time instead of using Vim or accidentally using Vim, and that's with an alias. So I use ZSH as my shell. You might as well if you're following from the last video. If you're not, if you're using Bash, then you would perform this next step in your Bash configuration file. Because I use ZSH, I'm gonna open up my ZSHRC and I have this section here for aliases. I already have one alias for LS, but I'm gonna make another one. I'm gonna alias Vim to NVim. So now when I type Vim, what I'm really gonna execute is the NVim command, and this just kind of allows me to write one less character and not use the, um, you know, the vanilla Vim that's uh, currently installed. If I save this and then I source my ZSHRC file, now when I type in Vim, I'm in NVim, which is neat. Uh, if I ever want to run traditional Vim or, or vanilla Vim, uh, and, I, and I can't because my alias is installed, and this goes for any alias, I can actually do this uh, forward slash Vim, and I will be inside of uh, regular Vim. This allows you to gain access to that unaliased command. Okay, so we have NeoVim installed. We've set up some basic settings in our init.vim. We've aliased Vim to NeoVim. The next thing we wanna do is worry about some plugins. There's a number of ways to manage plugins with Vim and NeoVim. The solution that I've been working with is something called VimPlug. VimPlug can be found on GitHub. It's got 25,000 stars. It's a very popular solution. Uh, there are other options out there that I'm exploring, but for now, VimPlug is my package manager of choice. If you go to the GitHub page, a little ways down, you will see a installation for specific uh, operating systems. You have Unix, Windows, Unix, and Linux. I'm gonna copy this command here for Unix and Linux, but I'm going to modify the file path in which this file is gonna be installed. So let's go back to our terminal. We can paste it here. I'm gonna come over to this area. I just want to use the home directory, which is really just home jake. Um, Home.config slash nvim autoload plug.vim. So what this command is going to do is it's going to fetch this file, this plug.vim, which is located inside of the vim plug repository's GitHub, and it's going to stick it in this file path that I've defined here. Now, the autoload uh, folder does not exist, so that's why we pass this create dirs um, flag to the command. So if it doesn't exist, it will create the folder and then stick the file where it needs to go. And if I click enter, the command runs, and now I can go into my config-nvim directory. And not only will I have this init.vim, but I also have a new autoload directory. So if I go into autoload and I ls, 
Now I have this plug.vim. Now that we have vimplug installed, let's go ahead and use it to install a few plugins. Uh, in order to use it, I'm gonna first create a new section below my general settings called plugins. And then I'm gonna write two functions here called plug begin and plug end. In between these two functions is where you define your plugins. This is a Vim plug syntax standard. So if you go to the GitHub repository for, for Vim plug, you can see that there is a call to plug begin and then a bunch of plugin declarations and then a call to plug end. So we're essentially just following the documentation. Now plug begin requires one argument and that is an absolute file path of where you will be installing your plugins. By default, it recommends this .vim plug directory, but we don't use .vim as a folder. You can if you want, uh, but we're gonna stick with the NeoVim conventions. So instead of using .vim plugged, I'm gonna use .config slash nvim plugged. And once we do that, we're free to install any plugins we want. Now, plugins with vimplug are kind of defined in this shorthand GitHub syntax. So you have the user, uh, the GitHub user followed by the GitHub repository. This is shorthand for, you know, doing something like this. Uh, let's go ahead and install a color scheme to get things uh, going and kind of demonstrate how to install something. There's a color scheme called Groovebox Material that I really, really enjoy, uh, created by this user. I don't know, Sane, Sane, Sane maybe. Uh, I really like this color scheme, so I'm gonna copy the username slash GitHub repository. I'm gonna come down here and write plug, open and close parentheses, and I'm gonna paste the username and the GitHub repo. Now this is how you declare plugins, mostly with, with Vim plug. There, there are some plugins that require a little bit more information, uh, but to actually install it, you have to take a couple of steps. So after declaring the plugin, we're going to save our init.vim with command W. Then we're gonna source init.vim with that SO percent sign. And then we are going to run a new command that was made available to us by vimplug, which is called plug install. Now when I click enter, a new buffer will open to the left of my current file. And you'll see that there's some UI related to vimplug that shows you what plugins you have installed and you know what their status is. But you also, I wanna show you how you can view more than just the plug install command because vimplug does provide more commands. So if I just type plug down here in the bottom left of my screen and I click tab, I'm gonna get a bunch of options here. I have plug, plug clean, plug diff, there's plug install. Uh, so if you ever want to know what commands are available, you can type in, uh, you know, just plug, and then you can sift through with tab or shift tab. So I'll go ahead and click plug install. And you can see here that the buffer did open and Groovebox material was finished installing. Uh, and now I can close it with command Q exclamation point. And we have the plugin installed, but we need to tell NeoVim that we want to use this color scheme uh, as our, th this installed color scheme as the default. So below our plugins, I'll write color scheme, groove box, material. I'll give it a command W and then I will source it. And boom, we have groove box installed. You can see immediately that the color scheme has changed. So that's really cool. Uh, we can also write set background equals dark set term GUI colors. These are, I don't believe I have that. Yeah, so let's create a new section here. We'll call it colors. And cool, now we have one plugin installed. We have a, uh, our color scheme defined. Now there's a number of other plugins that you can install to kind of make your life a little bit easier. I think what we currently have is plenty for demonstration purposes. And uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about how to configure NeoVim, 
uh, let me know in the comments. I can make a deeper video. I, again, I do have that article uh, called Getting Started With Him, and it's kind of massive. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a very long article. I mean, it's freaking long, Jesus Christ. You know, so that goes way into depth on each plugin that I use. I, I recommend a lot of them. I talk about setting up LSP with the default LSP configuration, auto completion, um, you know, Git integration. But for this current setup, I think we have a really good set of settings. We have a color scheme and, you know, if uh, you're curious what other plugins I'm using, feel free to check out that article or uh, check out my dot files. So that's gonna wrap up this video on configuring NeoVim. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Again, if you're interested in learning a little bit more, I'd love to uh, make a deeper video on this topic. It's something I'm really diving deep into. Uh, on the last video, in this series, which will be published shortly. I'm gonna walk through how to take all these configura your configuration files that are in your home directory. So we're talking the ZSH files, we're talking the config directory, uh, any other dot files that are precious to you. And we're gonna talk about managing them with Git and a tool called Sto. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in it. Um, and I'm really looking forward to kind of showing you guys how to do that because I think it's, you know, I've used different ways of managing dot files in the past and this one is definitely my favorite. It's definitely the most approachable. And uh, anyway, I hope you learned something from this video. I hope maybe I've piqued your interest on utilizing Vim a little bit more. Um, yeah, happy building.